Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, her family calls her cruel. Do you remember leaving these kids in the car for hours while you would go do drugs? No, I didn't ever do that. Twisted. You're saying that she was walking around naked in front of her children, not feeding them. You're such a liar. And evil. She probably cheated over a thousand times. A 17-year-old co-worker told me I've been sleeping with your mom. He was 18, and it was after our divorce. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. Go, Dr. Phil. you to listen to Kim talk about being a mother to her six children. I would walk through the pits of hell for my kids. I love my kids so much and I am a good mother. Just what you would expect to hear from a devoted mother, right? Well, her children, ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law all say Kim is an evil, twisted liar who has ruined all their lives. Things got so bad last year that Thelma says she received an urgent call saying her son Kenny was hospitalized after suffering a near-fatal breakdown. And Kim? Well, she was nowhere to be found. With her five grandchildren in need, Thelma rushed to their side, but she says what she found left her speechless. My ex-daughter-in-law, Kim, is a wicked, evil, horrible person. Kim has totally destroyed my son and the grandkids' lives. When we went to the house to pack up his belongings, the odor was so bad. I had to wear a mask when I entered the home. It was disgusting. I saw piles of laundry, animal feces everywhere. All the walls were filthy. All the doorknobs were sticky. I felt it was my responsibility and duty to step up as a parent and the big mama bear came out in me and I knew exactly what I had to do. Kim does not deserve these beautiful children. I hate what she has done to my son and my grandchildren. If Kim was sitting in front of me right now, I would say, you need to stay out of my grandchildren's life and my son's. Thelma was awarded emergency temporary custody of her grandchildren, and that's when she said she discovered what was really going on behind closed doors. Once I got custody, I heard so many disturbing things from my grandchildren. They told me that she would spend all day in her room and never come out. Kim was on drugs. She would walk around the house naked. And one of the children told me, Mama, Mama, you forgot your clothes. And she squatted down and peed right there in the hall. The kids also told me that their mother would come in and wake them up around 11 or 12 o'clock at night and tell them that dinner is ready. I was told that she would bring other men into the house. And I could only assume that it was drugs and sex. When I heard all these stories from my grandchildren, my heart just ached. I felt like, what kind of an animal is raising my kids, my grandkids. You believe that everything you're saying there was going on behind closed doors. These children were being subjected to this. Yes. When I received custody, the kids told me such bizarre stories that I, it was unbelievable. My heart just ached. I, I didn't know what to do. You're, you're saying that this mother was walking around naked in front of her children being in the hallway, just being totally neglectful, not, eat, not feeding them, not doing anything. This is what they have told me. You say she is an unfit mother, she doesn't deserve these children, that she is a horrible excuse for a parent. Yes. Kim is here. She says Thelma is flat out lying and is on a crusade. Not just a concerned grandma, she is on a crusade to ruin her. My mother-in-law 
uh, spreading lies about me, my children, and her own son. She wants to eliminate me from my family's life completely. Thelma tells my kids I'm a bitch, I'm evil, I'm a whore, I'm Satan's spawn. It's been about a year since Thelma took her children from me. Thelma had gone to a judge, told him that I had abandoned my children. I didn't abandon my children. I was struggling with addiction. This is the only way that I have to see my kids. Looking at creatures like candy posts. I miss everything. My birthdays, holidays. I honestly think Thelma's whole purpose is to ruin me. I think that if I were to die, she would probably do a happy dance on my grave. She's a disgusting woman. She pisses me off, and I hate her. I hate her with every ounce of my being. Well, Thelma and Kim haven't been face-to-face -face in over a year, but Kim is here now, so I'm going to ask her to join us, and let's just talk this through. Kim, Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. Have a seat. Uh, you know Thelma. You've not seen her for over a year, correct? Correct. She has, I, I actually wrote down some of the things she said. That you are a horrible person. She says that you are deceitful, that you are abusive, that you are neglectful. Just to begin, what's the truth here? Nothing that came out of her mouth. Um, to walk around naked and pee on the floor. Wow. You really went far with that one. Everything and that I have heard came from your kids' mouth. You're such a liar. She has custody of your children, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, your ex-husband wound up in a hospital with what lay people typically refer to as a nervous breakdown. Where were you? Oh, Where yeah. were you? I went to the house. Kirsten came out of the room and said, Dad just texted <clears> me <throat> and told me if you show up that you need to leave, otherwise the police are going to be called. Well, here's the custody paperwork, because we, we, went, we, we got this. This is an order for emergency shelter care and temporary custody. Reasonable cause existed to take minor children into protective custody. Due to homelessness, the parent's hospitalization, and the mother's apparent abandonment. Division unable to locate minor children's mother. Mother not being personally present in court. Mother must provide a drug-free urine sample prior to any visitation. In the care of Thelma, in the children's best interest. So, did you not show up at Oh, court? I was not told about any court. It was a private court. Thelma There's was no private court. Oh, no, there is. You have the right to be there. The, the observation was you failed to show up. I was not, I was not, not okay, I contacted Thelma three times. I didn't know about the hearing until after. When Why Katie were you had, calling her? To find out what was going on with the kids. She had told my other children not to answer you the phone. You knew the address. And I tried stopping by. No one was there. That did was you, in Kim, did you have world. sex with a 17-year-old friend nope. of one of your children? No. And he was 18, and it was after our divorce. <laughs> and it was after we were divorced and everything else. My kids were not involved in any of that until Thelma brought it into it. So the boy was 18? He was 18. It was one of your children's friends? No. I did not know he was one of my children's friends. Let's take a break here. Next, Kim's two oldest children say their mother is evil, cruel, and twisted. Uh, and has completely robbed them of their childhood. We'll be right back. I became known as the girl that's mom slept with younger boys. My mom is cruel, she's twisted, and she is evil. Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil. My son has completely terrorized our family. A child out of control. We sleep with my two younger children locked in the bedroom. He's banished to the basement. We're desperate to fit in. If you punch me, I'll knock you out. Look at that evil face. You're taunting him. You're a fool. You're evil. You're, uh, uh, uh. I've given up. Are you abandoning this child? That's tomorrow. My mom is a terrible mother. My mom is a pathological liar. She's manipulative and she's extremely selfish. I feel my mother abandoned me. My mom was an in and out mom. She was there and then 
she would leave and go party with her friends. My mom is cruel. She's twisted and she is evil. Growing up, my mom was a bully. She was mean and she was extremely scary and someone you wouldn't want to be around. When she was angry, she'd grab our arms and she would shake us and she would push us and she would hit us. One of my mom's favorite sayings to us is, are you deaf, dumb, or just plain stupid? My mom cheated on my dad throughout their marriage. My mom had sex with a 17-year-old coworker of mine. My mom sent him dirty pictures and messages and he showed me them while I was at work. I became known as the girl that mom slept with younger boys. Right now, I see my mom as an acquaintance. She's not really a mother figure. She's just someone that has been in my life. I'm pissed off that she abandons us and comes on this show and acts like she's a saint when she's left six kids at home to be raised by my dad. I feel like my mom robbed all my siblings and me of my childhood. Well, Kirsten, I'm, I'm glad to meet you. You use very harsh terms talking about your mother. You said evil, twisted, liar. You're saying that it is true, that she did have sex. How does that come up in conversation? Oh, by the way. He flat told me, I've been sleeping with your mom. And I just like sat there and I was like, you're what? Then he went on like to tell me and this lasted about an hour that he just told me like every single detail. And then he told me that he was 17, not 18. Okay, and he showed you the pictures. Mm -hmm. So you saw them with your own eyes. I did. And it was your mother. Yeah. Okay. And do you deny this? I yeah, I never sent him pictures, texts and stuff like that. Yeah, but, but you know. Were the pictures taken? There was never pictures taken. She saw the pictures. Are, are you are you saying that she's lying? No, I think that he was lying. What that was it? Your mother? I just saw um, breasts and down. I couldn't see her face, but he told me it was her. And you did have sex with him? Yes. There was a lady that came over to our house and almost killed me because you were sleeping with her husband. She almost... No, I wasn't. She Kirsten. slammed me up against the door and thought I was Kim. Mm -hmm. And she showed up to Kevin's house with a gun. Okay. I almost died because of it. Kirsten, I'm going to tell you right now. I had no idea that any of that was going on, and I was not sleeping with her husband or anything else. I wasn't doing that. You left in October. We had no money. You, what did you do to our food stamps? We had no money. I know. Here's you know what we did for my birthday cake? We put sugar in the pot and put water in the pot, and like that's what we did for a birthday cake and icing, and it was awful. But we didn't have any money to go buy a cake. No, Kirsten, I didn't have any money that. to get anything for my birthday. It, it was fine, but you left a week before my birthday. Okay, Kirsten. She sold the food stamps for drugs. Do you remember leaving these kids in the car for hours while you would go and do drugs? No, I didn't ever do that. One thing that I told my kids was that um, I can't take back anything that I did. I can only make and from what I do better. And you can't change what you don't acknowledge. And you've got this girl sitting in front of you now making the effort to tell you what's in her mind and what's in her heart. And you insult her by trivializing it. Is that what you want to do with her? No. <laughs> what do you think about all of this? There is six kids without a mom and I'm 18 and I'm taking care of the kids. Well, joining us by Polycom is Kim's oldest son, Kevin, who says he is so done with his mother he wouldn't even attend her funeral. Uh, Kevin, I'll turn it over to you. You don't even know your grandkids because you cannot stay away from everything that makes you evil. Kevin. You can't tell me that this is brainwashing from Grandma because I haven't talked to her in a year. Kevin, you don't let me see the grandkids when I'm down. I would stop. Because you're on drugs. I was sober. Kevin, I've been sober since last March. Really? Explain the drugs I found in my garage when you helped me move. Kevin, I've been sober since last March. But you also left in October, a week before my birthday, for drugs. Your dad. And you. No, wait. You were, I cleaned up your drugs in your room. Your dad kicked I, me out. And I was on drugs, Kira. But that wasn't a year ago. That wasn't 11 months ago. That was in October. And it was before that. Me, I'm the one that cleaned up your drugs. I was on drugs, Kira. That's why your dad threw me out. 
Yeah. Let's take a break. So where was Kirsten and Kevin's father while all of this was going on? He's here, and he says not only did he have no control over his ex-wife, he says she nearly killed him. She has cheated on Kenny so many times I could not give a number, but yet he takes her back. It's the hard seeing my dad go through as much. And later... When I was growing up, I knew that my mom was doing drugs. She told us she had cancer so she can do more drugs. One night she was serving dinner and she passed out and we all thought that she was dead. This May. When you were with her, were you involved with other women? Yes. Hey, I'm not married, yo. I'm not married. The stories are more intense. He grabs my face and hits my head against the wall. That did not happen? No. It's sad how much you lie. No, you're the crazy thing. Can I talk now? Because she keeps speaking over me. That's not class. Learn from class. The accusations are more shocking. The video is my husband calling my grandson sexy butt. I miss you, sexy butt. Touch that boy, isn't that the truth? I didn't touch any child. What were you afraid was going to come out if you went to trial? The scams are more outrageous. She had sent him over two hundred thousand dollars. He's my man. It's my life. He doesn't exist. Go to hell. We'll leave her out of it for a minute. We'll just... get her out of here then. I'll just give it to you, you bitch. But... And the secrets. He's doing steroids. I never said I was on steroids. Are more personal than ever. I'll get up and leave right now. Do whatever you want to do. It all happens this May. He marches out of here. You ought to have him by the ear, dragging him out here and say, set your ass down. Growing up, my mom made my dad seem like he was incapable. She would completely embarrass him and humiliate him in front of not only us, but friends, too. She would call him dumb, and she would say that you're not a man. When Kenny and Kim got married, I knew they were in for trouble. Every time she gave birth, she left for long periods of time. When she got pregnant with Kirsten, she was intimate with other men. A DNA test was done on Kirsten to see if she was Kenny's baby. The first time I ever saw my dad cry was when he was getting a divorce. It upsets me that my dad tries so hard and she turns around and stabs him in the back. It's the hard seeing my dad go through as much. She has cheated on Kenny so many times I could not give a number, but yet he takes her back. I don't understand my son to allow a woman like her back into his life for what? More abuse? I don't think there's a bone in her body that gives a hoot about my son. Well, before we add him to this conversation, let's hear what he has to say about his ex-wife and mother of his six children. Kim, it's the only girl that I've ever been with. I lost my virginity to her. I think that I will always have feelings for her. But I am upset with her for what she's done to the family. When we were married, she would take off and leave, oftentimes with a newborn baby in the home. I had a good career. Kim really ruined my name in the industry. One time, she asked me to take out her trash can, and as I was dumping it, I saw a note in there, and it was from another guy, and it said something to the effect of, I see you laying naked on the bed, and you're so beautiful, and that was painful. She probably cheated a thousand times easily. One time, she pocket dialed me and answered, hello, 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 and I could tell that she was in the middle of having sex with somebody. She got pregnant with another man. I knew I wasn't the dad, but I told her that, Kim, I don't think that I can be a good father to this child, and that the baby was placed for adoption. She made fun of our son that has a speech impediment. She would call him a retard. She would say stuff like, duh, 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 can't understand you. I stayed with her because I loved her. I stayed with her because I wanted to keep our family together. I was willing to sacrifice, and I think I went too far. He wrong too. You okay, Kim? What'd you say? I asked her if she was okay. You asked her if she was okay. What was it that um, landed you in the hospital? I'd been suffering from psychosis for over a month. And for you, this was a major depression 
The depressive psychosis, right? Right. I wasn't eating, wasn't drinking, lost right. a lot of weight. Um, couldn't sleep at night, just, just the thoughts would just brace. Um, mm -hmm. It was horrible. And where was Kim at that time? Kim was in the area, but she wasn't with the kids. Um, we had been texting. She knew that I was having troubles. Um, Were you surprised that she didn't come to help and support you and, and see after the children? I was surprised. I, I badly needed her there. I, I was waiting for 24 hours about for her to show up. I'd been asking her to come. And um, it was during this two weeks that you moved for emergency hearing, got custody of the children and removed them yes. out of state to where you were? Yes, and Kenny was life flighted out of state and we went, we happened to be there. We were, we were visiting and um, so we went directly to the hospital. And you think he wound up in the hospital because of Kim? Oh, yes. And what he, was it that she had done to him? The drug abuse, the, the lying, the cheating, the uh, going out with other men. Well, you would badmouth him to anybody you could. You still do to this day. Why would I want to do that? He's my own son. Yeah, you tell me. Yeah, you We've tell me. Why would I want years, to do that? Thomas. Why would I want to ruin him like you did? My grandma is going around town branding us as damaged kids and telling people that we're the mess babies. My siblings and I don't really like our grandmother. My grandma makes me mad right now because she will do anything she can to ruin our reputation and my dad's credibility. My grandma is going around town branding us as damaged kids and telling people that we're the meth babies. She's going over the top on some stories and twists them. I was miserable when she got custody of my siblings. I feel like my grandma doesn't approve of my mom and never has, but the fact that my parents still talk, she obsesses over. My grandma's goal is to completely get rid of my mom. My siblings and I don't really like our grandmother. You saw it as an opportunity to move in so that way you could get your son and the kids out there. That's all you did. Oh, I'm all sorry. All these promises. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I really... Asked. Holy shit, that's the first time I've actually heard that come out of your mouth. I felt like, oh, well, this is a great opportunity mm -hmm. for me to that's have all, That's it, period. Great opportunity. Great opportunity. Can I finish? I am no, talking. I don't It's care. a great opportunity for me to stay in the motel with the kids because I didn't want to stay in your ha filthy house. You sold everything else in the house. I that, when you did it sell, you threw out down the stairs everything that we had worked so hard for. Kirsten, you was, were there. No, 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 what no. What did I do? This is not between away. Kirsten. This is coming from everybody. Well, it, and it's, it is this true. Is coming we lost Kirsten was the one that was in charge of what needed to go and what stayed. I wasn't she in charge. She knew nothing about How old is she? Can we pause? Everything got thrown away. There was no order. There was no anything. Everything just got thrown away. I don't I know who said house. it, but it was just said, throw everything away. So we lost everything. We lost our clothing. We lost our TV. We watched our TV fly down the stairs. The TV already had a hole in it. No, it so just it, had a little crack in the corner. But it was the only TV that we had. We worked hard for everything that we got. We didn't get handed anything. And even if we begged, where were you? Where was I? Yeah. I'm supposed to dish out the money all the time? Is that what it I am? It wasn't always what we I'm needed. Just, I'm only good when there's money involved, and I stopped dishing it out years ago. What? For love. For a grandma. For nurturing. Where were you? Where were you? You were just there to badmouth me. You're right, Kirsten. Does that make you happy, Grandma? No, it has nothing to do with Grandma. What is it that, that you want to happen now? I don't think their grandma should have anything, it should be allowed to have anything to do with them. You have how many children staying with you now? Kenny has all of the children now. So you have none staying with you now? I have none. Okay, so they're not staying with her now, is my point. Right. So you're saying you don't think they should be with her? They're or not around with her. her. So they, they're not with her? No. I think they need to be with their dad. Okay, so you're good with the arrangement? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. I just want her out of their life. Okay, well, we're going to take a break. I, I want to hear from Dad here. And uh, I, I, I think the question that you raise is, is, is Thelma's hatred for her ex-daughter-in-law actually harming her grandchildren? We're going to talk about that after the break here. It wasn't enough for Thelma to tell the town, her friends, a judge, a caseworker that I'm just some woman who had kids and I don't want them. I think that's why she wrote into Dr. Phil show is to try to convince everybody that I don't love my kids, that my kids don't want me. And she's going to play the sob story and for me, look at what all the horrible, rotten things I've done. Her agenda is to completely have me eliminated out of my kids' lives. New Dr. Phil. He hears voices, tell him to kill people. Terrorized. We sleep locked in a bedroom. By their 13 year old son. He's banished to the basement. Are you abandoning this child? That's tomorrow. Kenny, I'm, I'm curious at this point uh, what you think the current situation is and, and what you think it needs to be. Do you think the children could and should have a relationship with Kim? I think they should. <clears throat> I think they should. They need their mom. Do you think that, that your mother should have a role in your children's lives? I think that she should. She should just be a grandma and, and bake them cookies and be happy to see them and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think it's clear that you have a very strong and powerful disdain for this woman. Would you agree with that? I would agree, yes. Yeah, and that's not likely to change, right? No, no, not with her track record. Ever since you first met me, you didn't like me. Yeah, um, and, and I, I think it's fair that you have a disdain for this woman, right? Uh, I think it's pretty clear that... Yeah, and, and that's probably not going to change. And, and, you know, the good news is that you two don't have to be in each other's space, but you do have some common elements here. And, and I agreed to do this show for one reason, and one reason only, and that is that there are some children that are caught in the crossfire here. And, and I, I always like to come in and, and try to get everybody to adopt an agenda that's in the best interest of those that maybe don't have as good a voice and you know Kevin and Kirsten are old enough to have a voice and they're old enough to make the choice and and move away and it seems to me that both of them have um, survived and turned out to be pretty nice young folks despite a lot of what they've been through yes. but we do have some young people that are still pretty impressionable here and uh, I, I can tell you that you don't have to like her. You don't have to hold her in any positive regard whatsoever. But she will forever be the biological mother of these children. And if you assassinate her character, however deserved you may think it is to those children, you are doing them a grave disservice. Mm -hmm. And if you assassinate the character of those children's biological mother, it will come back to haunt you in ways that you have yet to see. Because those children, the day will come when they will resent you for that, regardless of how much she may or may not deserve that. And I'm just telling you that you need to learn to bite your tongue. Just simply take the high road. There's so much less traffic up there. Just take the high road. I've, I've done and, that. And At first, I was shocked. I yeah, was shocked. I, was shocked. I, I do, but just, just take the high ground here, and it, you'll, it's so much more becoming to you to do that.
Friday on an all-new Dr. Phil. It is one of the most twisted and bizarre love deceptions we have ever covered on this show. She met her dream man online. Hunter told me he loved me over the phone. This clearly was romantic. Yeah, I shared everything with him. I never imagined that he was talking to another girl. I first met Hiram over Twitter. He saw my picture and he thought I was beautiful. He told me he loved me and he made me feel special. In love with the same man. But you're not the only ones. Seven girls. The man you had feelings for, the man who you thought was Hiram, is here. And a surprising twist. What did you think when you found out your identity had been stolen? Now, I had never seen a catfish like this one. The real person behind the deception. Did you fall in love with any of these girls? The co-eds and the catfish. They all say they're afraid of you. With a shocking revelation. Are y'all ready to meet the person behind this whole thing? You won't believe only on Dr. Phil. What I would say to you is you're the leader of this family and you need to father those children. And to the extent that she positions herself in a way that she can be a healthy factor in those children's lives, then I would certainly support that. But do not be an enabler. Do not be blind and allow her to be in those children's lives. Parent is a noun and a verb. It's not just something you are by birthright. It is something you do, and you do it in a responsible fashion. And if she relapses into drugs, if she is bitter, if she is angry, if she is in denial, if she fails to recognize her responsibilities and does not respond to these children in a proper way, then you have to put very strict boundaries there. If she's living in motel rooms, if she says, I'm going to show up, and she doesn't show up, she has to become a citizen a contributing citizen first mm -hmm. and become a mother second. If she's not, if she doesn't have a job and pay her own way and show up and become a responsible contributing member of society, it's going to be a very difficult time to be a responsible parent. Mm -hmm. And it is your job, however much you may love her and have a broken heart with her or whatever, your primary responsibility, your undivided loyalty is to those minor children. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to the extent that you can broker a relationship, a healthy relationship between them and their mother, by all means do that. Learn to co-parent with her. Mm -hmm. But you cannot. Let me, when, when there are things like a woman throwing her up against the ball, was there a gun in her purse or not? You know, uh, th the fact that those words are even in sentences involving one of your children right. is exclusionary criteria for her being in the life of your children. That kind of rhetoric must be excluded from conversations about mother and child. And until they are, she's not a candidate for being in their lives. So you need to make sure that's true. Yes. Okay? And you need, some, you, you need some help in coming up with a co-parenting plan, and I will get you the help to do that, someone that will monitor that and make sure that that, help, that happens in a healthy way. Okay. Okay, I will, I will, that's just my gift to y'all to do that. I, I, I that. want you in your children's lives as a responsible mother, but not as an irresponsible. Well, you agree with that, right? Mm -hmm. You agree with that. All right, coming up, a guest who says her body should be donated to science because she just doesn't sleep. We'll meet her after the break. Did you get married when you were broke, but now you're successful? Or are you already financially secure and getting ready to tie the knot with someone who is not? Are you worried about what will happen to your money if your marriage fails? If you've asked your partner to sign a prenuptial or postnuptial agreement and you didn't get the reaction you hoped for, or you want to ask but you're afraid to, email me at drphil.com. My next guest, Carrie, says she's lucky if she gets more than four hours of sleep a night 
And it's not because she's burning the candle at both ends. In fact, she says she is desperate to get more sleep because her marriage and sanity are going downhill fast. I think I'm a freak of nature because I do not sleep. <gasps> Dang it. What person does not sleep? I started having trouble sleeping after the birth of my son in 2008. He was premature and he spent nine weeks in NICU. So my son did come home. I had anxiety because I was so scared something was going to happen to him on my watch. My son was diagnosed with Crohn's disease last year. Now I don't sleep because anything can happen in the middle of the night. <sighs> Another night. My brain never goes into sleep mode. It's always on. I toss and turn all night. The slightest noise will wake me up. I usually get anywhere from two to four hours sleep a night. And I've gained a lot of weight since I've stopped sleeping. I put on 100 pounds. Every morning I wake up with a headache. I'm angry and irritable all the time. My husband and I do not sleep in the same bed because any movement he makes will wake me up. The insomnia is, is destroying my marriage. I feel terrible that I'm putting my family through this. I don't like the person insomnia has created and I do not want to share my bed with it anymore. Well, Carrie is here, and also joining us is our longtime good friend, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall, Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. So, welcome. Thank Glad you. you're here. So, how, so how did you sleep last night? Really? Yeah. Hardly at all. Not it's good. Insomnia, but plus the excitement, and yeah, not at all. From a medical standpoint, mm -hmm. Uh, Doc, how often does this happen? Yeah. So Carrie is really not alone. I mean, sleep trouble is very common. Long-standing, not just occasional, sleep disorders. Um, nearly 45 million Americans suffer. 45 million? 45 million Americans. <clears throat> Insomnia is one of the most common forms of sleep disorder here in the United States in particular. So what is that? So insomnia is simply stated a difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep or the combination of those two things. Um, in order for it to be chronic insomnia, then a person has to experience that three nights a week for at least three months. So it sounds like this might be what Carrie is experiencing, but she needs to see her doctor for a diagnosis to see what it is. And of course, we should talk about that in a minute. Okay, so how did you sleep before your son was born? Because you said you, you had issues and then hospitalization and all. How did you sleep before that? Uh, like a teenager, I could sleep from 9 to 10 hours. I okay. enjoyed my sleep. So you clearly have an onset trigger. You know yes, that's what started that. Yes, that's when all this started. Loss of sleep can happen for a whole host of reasons. Sometimes people know exactly why and some people they don't they don't know why and there are a whole range of causes everything from stress and anxiety as you've described to things like thyroid conditions or um, certain medications may cause this in addition to that common things that we do we may not think affect our sleep like overuse of stimulants nicotine and caffeine and then to add on top of that there are other conditions that can cause uh, loss of sleep uh, like sleep apnea is another example and this as you know occurs frequently in people who are either overweight or um, who are obese for and being a caregiver is clearly stressful but and you know you had those issues early on and now with Crohn's disease yes sir so you watch that but look if if, if you love your child and you know you do <laughs> yes we I do. know you do then you have to take care of your child's mother and that's what scares me the most because if I don't get rest if I don't get sleep I'm not gonna be at 100 percent well no and you can't give away what you don't have if if you're the only mother your child's ever going to have and so y you have to take the time and realize it's not selfish to take care of you because you don't want to be emotionally bankrupt you don't want to be physically bankrupt and you have to be willing to ask for help whether it's f for other people to help out or support groups or babysitters or family members you've got to be willing to ask for help yeah, and, and I'd like to add on another really good reason to pay attention to sleep loss. So, you know, we know that there are a lot of things that happen, and Carrie, you mentioned some, you've just uh, mentioned a few others. Feeling bad the next day or over time, just not being sharp, being um, less uh, alert and able to deal with things emotionally bankrupt and physically as well. 
But that, it doesn't stop there. So chronic sleep loss or lack of sleep over periods of time actually contribute to very serious medical conditions and can be life-threatening. So it's been linked to um, diabetes and heart disease. There was a recent study that actually found that adults who get less than six hours of sleep a night, six hours of sleep a night over time have a four times greater risk of having a stroke. So this is a real health risk beyond the day-to-day -day risk that you carry. So it's especially important to take this seriously. Talk to your health care provider to get a diagnosis. Your health care provider may refer you to a sleep specialist uh, to help figure out what is going on. And the good news is that most sleep disorders actually can have uh, effective treatment. There is uh, psychological, behavioral, and or medical treatments that can be effective in treating sleep disorders. So there's a lot to know about them. This is a very complex area. Um, and of course, for more information on good sleep habits and information and resources for sleep disorders, you can visit GetHealthyStayHealthy.com. Interesting, I had a, a friend that was having this kind of problem recently and I sent him to GetHealthyStayHealthy.com and they, you guys have a great action list there. There's like 10 points there. And he went through the 10 point list and it talks about not, to, he talked about don't take naps late in the day, mm -hmm. make sure the, the room was really dark at night and get a wind down routine. Those were three of the 10 that he said made a big impact of him that you guys have listed there. So great information thank as you. always. Uh, I want to thank all of my guests today, especially Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall. For more information on today's show, visit drphil.com. We'll see you next time. Gary, thanks so much. Thanks so much. We'll see you. Bye. Thanks guys. See you. See you guys.